Happy Thanksgiving, everybody. It's great to see you guys here. It's nice that we uh, get together again and worship our loving God. And those of you watching at home, we welcome you today as well. You know, we hope you're having a great Thanksgiving. And we're glad you're worshiping God with us. So let's give God the first word this morning. I'm going to read from 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verses 16 and 17. And God's word tells us, be joyful always, pray continually, give thanks in all circumstances, for this is God's will for you in Christ Jesus. Amen. I'm going to have you guys stand. You're going to join us in singing the song, Let All Things Now Living. I'm just going to have one request that you just keep your masks on while we sing. words from Psalms 9, verses 1 and 2. I will give thanks to you, O Lord, with all my heart. I will tell of all your wonders. I will be glad and rejoice in you. I will sing praises to your name, O Most High. Give thanks to the Lord our God and King. His love endures forever. For He is good, He is above all things. His love endures forever. Sing praise, sing praise. With a mighty hand. And outstretched on his love endures forever for the life that's been reborn. His love endures forever. Sing praise, sing praise, sing praise, sing. setting sun his love endures forever by the grace of God we will carry on his love endures forever sing praise sing praise sing praise Forever God is with us 
His love endures forever. His love endures forever. His love endures forever. His love endures forever. Sing praise. Sing praise. Sing praise. pray with me. Father God, we thank you for supplying us with blessings beyond our deserving. Lord, we thank you for your everlasting grace and forgiveness. We thank you for your Son, our risen Lord, who has gone before us and who calls us to follow him. Lord, we thank you for our homes and our loved ones. We thank you for all those you put in our lives that have been examples and have persuaded us to take the journey to follow you. Lord, we thank you for our faith and the guiding comfort of your Holy Spirit. And we thank you for your powerful promise of life everlasting. In Jesus' holy name we pray. Amen. Well, this one's going to sound really familiar, but the words may not. But I think you guys will all catch on. This one's called, With Grateful Heart, My Thanks I Bring. With grateful heart, my thanks I bring before the great your praise I sing I worship in your holy place and praise you for your truth and grace for truth and grace together shine in your most holy word divine in your most holy word to you and you did save your word of grace new courage gave the kings of earth shall thank you lord for they have heard your wondrous word yes they shall come with songs of praise for great and glorious are your ways for great and glorious are your
So we're going to have today's children's video, and it's about the first, first Thanksgiving, which this video I find both hilariously funny and informative. So gather the kids, you guys here too, enjoy the video. Ah, uh, Thanksgiving. A holiday steeped in good old-fashioned American tradition. First celebrated in 1621, Thanksgiving was created by the Pilgrims, a brave group of separatists who fled England in search of religious freedom. Hear ye, hear ye, thou must chooseth my way or the highway. Whoa, we are so out of here. The group boarded a ship called the Mayflower and sailed off to the foreboding continent of America. Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Are we there yet? Just about. Only 67 more days to go. On December 11th, after two straight months of sickness and stormy seas, they finally landed in the New World. Roy, I call this land Plymouth. Yeah, yes, and, and look at that rock. Let's call that rock Plymouth Rock. And so the colony began, a brave group of vagabonds worshipping freely in America. But the, the fun, fun didn't end there. there. After a brutal winter, it became evident that the pilgrims had overlooked a few key survival essentials. Dear God, worshipping freely is really great and all, but in our haste it seems we have overlooked the fact that we're not very good farmers. We are in need of your provision. And provide he did, in the form of an English-educated Indian named Squanto. I have tons of great skills. Bow hunting skills, fishing skills, farming skills. I pretty much have every skill necessary for a transatlantic colonization. Soon, with the help of Squanto and other peaceful Indians, the pilgrims were able to establish a sustainable colony. Wow, us pilgrims have sure been able to establish a sustainable colony. Yes, and if you would please turn your attention to Exhibit A, you will note the bountiful amount of corn. Tribal flavin! In light of the abundance of their harvest, they decided to hold a feast in celebration of God's provision. <laughs> They called it Thanksgiving Day. Oh, this is going to be fun. We'll have games for the kids and all sorts of delicious tidbits to share with the Indians. Oh, and here's an idea. Let's take all the bread and stuff it inside the turkey cook it that way. We'll call that stuffing. And so goes the story of Thanksgiving. Of course, over time, the holiday has evolved as communities and families have each developed their own traditions and celebrations. Cousin Jethro says the best way to cook the turkey's on the radiator. Yeah, it's sort of baked already by the sun on account of we use roadkill. But regardless of how the holiday is celebrated, it is important to remember that at its origin, Thanksgiving was dedicated to God out of gratefulness for his protection and provision. <laughs> A day set apart to prompt us to consider the many ways in which we have all been blessed. Well, good, well, good morning, morning to, to everyone, everyone here, here uh, joining, joining us in the, the sanctuary, sanctuary, to those, to those of, you of you joining us on the live stream on YouTube Live, and, and as, as well as any of you may be listening out in the parking lot on 105 uh, uh, FM. A couple of words of uh, greeting to you this morning. Number one, happy Thanksgiving. Thank you for saying it back. And the next word of greeting is, is welcome, welcome to, to church. church. Okay, so, so that's, that's my, my greeting, greeting for you, and, and we also receive God's, God's greeting as we come, come to worship. worship. And so, um, um, please, please receive God's, God's greeting where you, where you are. are. May the love of God and the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you on this Thanksgiving day and all the days of your lives. Amen. Amen. We, we are, are um, here, here in the sanctuary, sanctuary going, going to to, um, to skip, skip the walk around and greeting and, and, and passing the peace and handshaking. handshaking. But, but if you guys, guys want to turn around and welcome one another in the name of the Lord in a, in a sort of distance way, way please, please do, do that, that by, by all means. means. This, this is, is our, our oh, look at the waves. waves. I love it. I love it. So, so this, this is, is our Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving Day service, service. and a, a, a great um, tradition. You know, let me, let me take, take care, care of one, one thing. thing. Um, because, because we're doing, we're doing this, this in a different, different sort of way, way. There's, there's a couple things you need to understand. understand. If, you if you haven't already, already um, you, you probably, probably received a link, link in the, the Bell, Bell One, one midweek, midweek that, that has, has a link to 
um, a video that we made. It is a 13-minute epic video explaining the way kind of church is being done here in person. Um, take a look at that, and um, if you look on YouTube, you can find it at our channel also. Um, if you're here and you came and you're ready to um, give your tithes and offerings, those Thanksgiving offerings that we sent envelopes out for, just know that on the way out, at the end of the service, there are baskets located at the very back. And there's also a, um, a drop, excuse me, not baskets, drop boxes mounted to the walls back there, and a drop box mounted over here also. So on your way out, you please do that. Give us the Lord leads. And um, so keep that in mind. Um, one of the things that we do each Thanksgiving Day service is we want to um, take a time not only to, to talk at you, you're going to hear the word, um, we're going to sing in response to hearing of the word, but this is a time when um, there is gratitude on all of our, our hearts. And, and, and we, we think, think that one of the one most awesome ways to um, express that is to, is to speak it out. So if you guys don't mind, I'm going to come around with the, with the microphone and, um, and we'll maybe share some, some testimonies. Anybody who's willing, no pressure. But if you have something, by all means, let's, um, let's, let's, let's speak it out and, uh, and, and make it known to one another so that we can be grateful along with you. And after that, um, Pastor Zach is going to come up and, and, and lead, lead us in, in, in prayer. prayer. So, so if, if you, you have, have requests, requests or, or if you, you have, have a, 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 a testimony, testimony you, want you want to praise the Lord, Lord um, I'm, I'm going to come around with the mic right now and, and we'll share, share those together. together. I'm going to prime the pump, pump actually, actually, a little bit. bit. And I, I, I see, see one hand, hand out there. there. I'm going to prime the pump a little bit and and mention that um, during, during this time, time of, uh, of, of, of quarantine, the stay-at-home stay orders, and, 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 and all of those things, things. One, one of the things that, that, um, that our family has been blessed with is, is that my in-laws, Michelle's parents, parents um, sent us an electric, electric smoker. And, and so we had, we to, had learn to learn how to use, use it before, we, uh, before, before Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving because they're actually flying here today, and they want to see like what we've been able to do with it. And so, and so there's been a lot of learning that's going, and I've, I've never really like cooked, cooked like a big piece of meat from beginning to the end. end. So, so you know we're, we're making like ribs and these roasts for the youth group, group and all these things, things. And, and, and I'm, I'm looking, looking at it, I'm like, wow, look at look at, look at what, what I did. did. I, took I took this like hunk of flesh and cooked it for hours and hours and sauced it up and served it up. But what 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 you realize when you really start thinking about it is that that's not where the work begins. Michelle and I were reflecting on that. You know, you, you know, may you take, take it out, out of the packaging, packaging and, and start, start cooking and working, and working but, but in reality, reality there's, there's a grocer and there's a, there's a butcher, butcher and then there's years and years, and years of training that goes into that. that. And, 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 and in, in, in many, many ways, ways like, like everything that, that we provide, provide our own families, families with, with, there's, there's been, been so many other hands and so many other like hearts and prayers and hard work that has touched that. So I'm grateful for the way that people, you know, work together to bring to, to my, my family, family what, what, what ultimately, ultimately God, God is, is, is providing. providing. So, so I give, I give thanks, thanks for that. that. Did I see your hand? Community and family and friends throughout this past year. Pastor Zach, you used to like, be able to cross through the aisles, but... but Take off, off now. And also the, the fact that we've been able to live stream and get our message out to, uh, to the congregation. I remember the first time we did Sunday night service in the uh, parking lot, the amount of people that turned up and we're so thankful to see other people. That's so, so, so much to be thankful for. I just wanted to say that I am thankful for Valley Christian Schools 
and for the teachers at Valley Christian. Um, they have worked tremendously hard um, this year to get our school open. And for someone like our family who has um, Benjamin, and you all know Benjamin, um, the teachers have been amazing. Um, they've done what they could to keep the school open, to keep kids like Benjamin and all our kids um, learning, uh, not just about math, reading, all that stuff, but about the Lord in this crazy time. And I've never been more thankful for the school system than I am this year. I just, I just want to, want to say, say with uh, everything, everything that's, that's going, going on this year with the pandemic, pandemic uh, passing of my brother, brother uh, the knee, sudden knee surgery, surgery I had to have, it's been uh, fantastic, fantastic to have a supporting, supporting family, family that have been always, always there with me. With me. Linda, can, can I, I come, come over there and ask, ask you to share the um, prayer request that, that came in for uh, your daughter? She does, does have, have seizures, seizures, but these, these don't, don't seem to be seizures. seizures. She, she was, was having, having trouble, trouble last night, night. Um, and, and it, it wouldn't stop. stop. So, so she's, she's in there. there. She, she went in last night, night and they're doing some tests on her to, to see, see what, what the problem, problem is. is. All right, so let's be praying for the Daltons at our tables today and for, uh, and for Michelle. Hi, um, I, uh, I'm, a teacher, I'm a teacher, and so I've been teaching online all year, and I've really missed being present with my students. I've missed their personalities, and I've missed their, their um, interaction with each other. And I've, I've realized that that's something that we've taken for granted in past years, and so I'm just grateful for an opportunity to continue to kind of work in that profession. Um, and I also want to take the opportunity to... Um, to say that I'm proud of my country, and I'm very grateful to be living in America. And there's a lot of change in the cultural attitudes about America right now, um, but it's still a country that everybody in the world wants to come and live in, and we, a place where we can worship freely and share Jesus with our friends and our family, and, um, and just uh, continue to thrive and grow and pursue a lot of, uh, a lot of the free choice about what we do with our lives in spite of these limits that we have on our freedoms as a president. So I'm grateful for that. Praise, Praise the Lord. Lord. Anyone, Anyone else? else? I don't, I don't want to miss, miss anyone. anyone. This has been a very rough time with COVID and everything else. I just want to I'm thankful for the leaders um, in this church. Uh, just, just to start, start off with, they have, have to make a lot of tough decisions. decisions. I, I know I had a chance to talk with some of them, but making the decision to, to try this today is a tough one. one. It may have been a tough one, one for all of us to decide if we were, were even going to show up here today, today wherever, wherever they may be. be. So, so thank, thank you to all the leaders here at this church, as was mentioned before, the school, the government. These are trying times for everyone. So I'm thankful for God for giving us strength to make it through this from day to day. Pass this to George, George and then uh, uh, for the speaking, live stream. I'm speaking for, I think, most of us here, but this is the day I've been waiting for for weeks to be back at our church. Thank you. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. Thank you, sir. I'd like to say that for somebody who doesn't have the musical ability, I want to say thanks to Jeff, I don't know what you went to, but for every night, sometimes I don't get to do it right at 8 o'clock, but I always check back in and listen to Jeff's song and to Aaron's piano playing. It's been really good to know in our community 
that they're there. And I appreciate that. Pastor Zach, a lot of things to give thanks for, a lot of uh, some prayer requests to bring to the Lord. I'll turn it over to you. Good morning, everybody. It's good to be here together. Happy Thanksgiving, as everyone else has said. I want to express that as well. Our God is the Lord of life. He's given us so much, and it's a, a good and important thing for us to do, gathering together from wherever we may be, uh, joining our hearts in prayer to give him thanks for his many blessings. So let's do that. Our, Our Heavenly, Heavenly Father, Father, on this, on this beautiful, beautiful day, day, on a day, a day of joy, of song, we join our hearts and our lives, our thoughts and our faith together towards you, you in gratitude. Lord, Lord we, we join, join the psalmist, psalmist who says, Oh, give thanks to the Lord, for he is good, for his steadfast love endures forever. Let the redeemed of the Lord say so, those he redeemed from trouble and gathered in from the land, from, from the east, and from the west, from, from the north, and from, from the south. Lord, you have gathered us in for worship this morning from many places, many directions. We are, as the psalmist says, the redeemed. We are the people who you have brought out of slavery to sin and freedom in Jesus Christ. Lord, we are thankful that we can gather in from many places, whether here in church or from our homes or across the city or even across the country, tuning in to this service from many different places. Lord, we are thankful for the technology that has helped us to stay connected uh, as a church family and in worship during this past year. And Lord, we are thankful for those who have learned how to use this technology so that, so that we can, we can worship, worship under, under these unusual circumstances, circumstances here in 2020. And yet, and yet Lord, Lord, we know, we know that, that there is something even more powerful than human technology to bring us together, and that is your Holy Spirit. Spirit. Your Holy Spirit, Spirit that unites us together and with Christ. And for this, we give you thanks. Lord, we are thankful for all that Christ has done for us, for, for giving us his life, for washing away our sin, for being with us, walking with us through everything, and for ruling all things with his justice and righteousness. And Lord, even as we give thanks for this greatest gift, Jesus Christ, and for the life everlasting that we have hoped for into eternity, we also give you thanks for the good blessings that you've given to us in this life. Lord, we thank you for the beauty of your creation. Lord, we thank you for the joy of friendships and for support from friends during tough times and times of loss, as Gary mentioned. Lord, we thank you for the love of family and for church family and for the leaders here who have uh, faced unusual circumstances and granted them wisdom. And Lord, may we walk in your wisdom in your ways. Lord, we thank you for for our jobs and for our homes. Lord, we thank you for schools and for the, the way that teachers have stepped up to the, the challenges of the year. So grateful for Valley Christian School and for the other Christian, uh, other Christian schools and public schools in our area. Lord, we pray for strength for administrators and teachers as they persevere through this school year. Lord, we're so thankful for those uh, who prepare the food that we eat and for the food that you so graciously give us. We're thankful, Lord, for those who serve us in government, those who serve us in the armed forces, those who serve in hospitals and law enforcement, on the front lines in dangerous places for people who fight fires and who respond in uh, disaster. Lord, we're grateful for them, and we're grateful for this country, Lord, for the freedoms that we have to enjoy here, for worship and assembly and voting and all those things. Lord, we are we uh, come, come to you with a profound sense, sense of gratitude. And Lord, we, we also ask, ask your blessing, blessing, knowing that there are many people facing uh, hurts and losses and who feel, feel those especially on the day that's special, like, like today. So we, we pray, pray for them, them too. And, and also lift up before you uh, uh, Linda, the Dalton's daughter and the um, needs that she has for her health, that, that you will provide uh, um, help and healing and, and wisdom for her treatment. God, we're, we're thankful, thankful for this church, for the work of ministry, ministry that, we that we get to do, to do together, together with you. 
for our staff and leaders and volunteers who serve us so faithfully. And we pray, Lord, that the, the joy you've given to us would be infectious in our witness for you, for the gospel here in Bellflower, that others would come to know you and give thanks to you in the same way. And now, Lord, we give you thanks for your word and ask for your blessing as we hear it proclaimed, saying with the psalmist, the Lord is my strength and my shield, in him my heart trusts. So I am helped and my heart exalts, and with my song I give thanks to him. Lord, this prayer we lift up before you in the name of Jesus. Amen. Amen. All right. for, for the, the beauty, beauty of, of the, the earth, earth, for, for the, the glory of the skies, for, for the love which from our birth over and around us lies. Christ, Christ our Lord, to, to thee we raise this, our hymn of grateful praise. October 3rd. Let me take, take you back, back to October 3rd. 3rd. It was my, my wife's, wife's birthday. birthday. That's, That's not, not the October 3rd, 3rd I'm talking about. about. I'm going, going back, back to October, October 3rd, 1789. 1789. George, George Washington, Washington made a proclamation on October 3rd, 1789. And, and he, he said, said now, now therefore, therefore I do recommend and assign Thursday, the 26th day, day of November, to be, be devoted, devoted by, by the people, people of these states to the service of that great and glorious being, being who is, who is the, the beneficent, beneficent author of all the good that was, that is, or that will be, that we may then all unite in rendering unto him our sincere and humble thanks for his kind care and protection of the people of this country previous to their becoming a nation, for the signal and manifold mercies and the favorable interpositions of his providence, which we experience in the, great, in the course and conclusion of the late war, for tranquility, tranquility, union, and plenty, which we have since enjoyed, and particularly now the national one, now lately instituted, for the civil and religious liberty with which we are blessed, and the means we have of acquiring and diffusing knowledge, and in general for all the great and various favors for which he hath pleased to confer upon us. This was the Thanksgiving pronouncement of October 3rd, 1789. Not, Not the first, first national, national holiday. holiday. I think, I think that, that came a little bit later. later. But 231 years ago was, was the first pronounced. Uh, this is today's the 26th, 26th right? right? How, How about that? that? Listen, Listen, our church video, video mentioned, mentioned this a little bit. bit. And, and going, going forward from, from that, that first Thanksgiving, and, 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 and people, people have um, resource, resource Thanksgiving in a lot of different ways. ways. Secular and sacred, and, and we can be grateful for, for all of those things. Last year on Thanksgiving, I got to um, be up here in the pulpit for the um, Thanksgiving Day worship service, and I had the opportunity to preach and, and share a little bit about um, thanking God for the amazing things that he had done in our church during 2019, and, and how all of us as older men and women and younger people and new believers, seasoned saints, um, youth, um, the, future the future of the church, church all of us can be grateful for one another. For one another. That, that was November 20-something 20 20 of 2019, 2019 and, then and then four, four months, months later, our, our world was rocked. Four, four months, months later, later our, our, our church um, ceased to have in-person ministry. ministry. The church would cease. Nothing, nothing, nothing ended, ended in that respect, respect but, but, but our, our, our spiritual, spiritual practices were interrupted. interrupted. Our health, health was at, at risk. risk. Everything, Everything that, that doctors and, 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 and TV told us, be careful, shelter in, in place. And then the and things, things that they were asked to do, that we were asked to do to mitigate that risk, that risk threatened, threatened our livelihood, livelihood threatened, threatened our sanity, threatened, threatened our kids' education. education. Drove people bonkers. I wondered what would become of a ministry coordinator who had no in-person ministry to coordinate. And I, and I shared that with people who would listen to me. And those people said, hey, 
buck up and give, give thanks. thanks. God, God is, is in control. control. That's, That's what, what I want to share, share with, with you today. today. As, as you, you go, go into your Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving celebration, celebration, as you look back and take stock of all that's happened over these last many months, months and you come together and celebrate, or you, or you come, come together, together and, 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 and ease tensions, tensions in your own family or in your own heart. heart. And, 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 and so, so I, I want this to be a very message today. today. I'm going in and out a little bit. You guys just bear with me. Philippians, Philippians chapter 4, four verses, verses 6 and 7 is what, is what I want to look, look at. at. Philippians, Philippians 4, 6 and 7, and seven just, just two verses, and I'll reference them throughout, throughout as well as, as well others, others, from the, the Apostle, Apostle Paul, Paul, where he, he says, says, do not be anxious about anything, anything. but in, in everything, everything, by prayer and supplication, supplication with, with thanksgiving, thanksgiving make, make your requests known to God, God. And, the and the peace of God, God which surpasses, surpasses all understanding, understanding will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. This ends the reading of God's word. We know that God always blesses his word to those who listen. May we be listening people this Thanksgiving morning. Let's take a look at that scripture through, um, from a few different angles, all right? Um, and, 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 and as, as we, we do, do that, that, let's be, let's let's be, be praying, praying and let's, let's be um, committing, committing ourselves to have open eyes and open hearts now, now going, going forward, forward through the rest of the day um, um, to, to God's, God's holy word, to Christ's, Christ's comfort and protection in our lives, lives um, not, not just this day, but all these days going forward. forward. One of the One things that I see in these two short verses is encouragement for worriers. I'm a worrier at times. I know, I know some, some of you, you are, are too. too. Now, now, prior, prior to, the to the verses that we look, look at today, Paul was talking to these two women in this city, okay? okay? Um, Yodia and Syntyche were their names. And these two women in the um, Philippian, Philippian church were in a conflict. In a conflict. And, and Paul, a bold man, stepped, stepped in the midst of a conflict, conflict between two church ladies and asked, asked them to work it out. out. Paul's words, words to them reminded them that, 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 that they, they were citizens, citizens of heaven and that, and that they, they were, were not of this world. world. And, and, and for, for the, the women and, and the people around these women to help one another, to unify and to, and to ready, ready themselves, themselves for the coming of the Lord. And after, and after this strong plea to the church to get its act together, together Paul follows it up with, with an encouragement. encouragement. Verse 6, do not be anxious about anything. It's a tough, tough one. one. All, All of us are sinners. sinners. Uh, All of us are susceptible, susceptible to the kind of temptation to offend somebody else or to, or to, or to be easily offended, offended right? right? Thin-skinned Thin folk we are sometimes. sometimes. And, because and because of that, conflict, conflict will come. come. Anxiety about conflict exists. And all of us, to, to varying degrees, we look um, into our future next week, next year, and we, we start to anticipate things with a degree of anxiety and with a degree of anticipation of issues popping up. And oh man, how many of you guys are saying that certain conversations don't come up around your table today? I guess, I guess what, what I'm, I'm talking, talking about, about is, is, is this, this issue, issue of worry. Paul knew that the Philippians had a tendency to worry about things. And he says to them firmly, do not worry about one single thing. This is a command. It's a command because worry, friends, is sin. Worry is sin. I'm not bringing this out to condemn I'm not, I'm not bringing this out to make anybody, anybody feel bad, but, but I want to bring light to a very dark area that, that, that we can give to the Lord today. today. Um, one, one of my, my favorite speakers, speakers pastors, pastors, teachers, John, John MacArthur, MacArthur says that worry is the sin of distrusting the promise and providence of God. And yet, it is a sin that Christians commit perhaps more frequently than any other. We are, we are a worrying people at times. And, and, and what, what that, that church, what, what we need to realize um, is, is that, that even this Thanksgiving, the difference between being faithfully, faithfully vigilant 
or being watchful over a situation or a future scenario, or being vigilant without faith. Now, a couple of weeks ago, you might remember if you drove past it, or if you knew what was going on in the life of the church, is that our entire church was tented for a termite treatment. Anybody even see the whole church all tented up? So weird to look at from, from my backyard. But I want to let you know that before that happened, there was, a, there was a week or so during which there was a preparation in the church where people had to get their stuff out of there that could have been damaged by the, the treatment that happened inside of the walls of the tent. Also, there was the reality that inside there was a lot of, there were a lot of open doors inside of here that are normally, this place is normally pretty locked shut. But during, but during that, that termite treatment, there were things that were open that aren't normally, and, and we had to put away, away some valuable things because you never know what's going to happen. And I want to tell you a story about um, Dave Evans this morning. He has no idea I'm going to talk about him. Dave wanted to make absolutely sure that everything on this stage got locked away into a container and taken out of here, lest it be damaged or lest it be taken away because things were open. And so, and so Dave, Dave had a crew, crew lugging, lugging stuff, stuff out, out of here. here. And, and it, it may have looked, because Dave's intense, it may have looked like he was worrying about what was going to happen. We have another guy, um, Mike. Mike. Mike is the property team uh, chairman. Mike sat in his car next to the church overnight. He was on stakeout all night long watching the church. It may have looked like Mike was worried about something that was going to happen. But the truth in those men's lives, right, as long as it's true, is that they were being alert, they were being concerned about the issues, but they were doing it with a measure of faith. Lord, help me to protect the valuables in this church. Lord, help me to be a good steward of the, of the, of the property and resources for ministry that we have, that we might be able to serve God and have nothing threaten that. But being alert and concerned about issues, whatever they are, without faith is worry. And worry is sin. Hebrews 11.6 says, Without faith it's impossible to please God. Now, our Thanksgiving application and perhaps a, a, a defining moment or life application here um, for this passage is that the worry that we have in our hearts about many things is something that we are indeed going to stand accountable to God for. And maybe you feel, as I often do, as I did at the beginning of this pandemic until I was like calmed down, um, as if there's nothing that we can do about a situation except worry. When we feel like relationships and, and stability are at the point of, of breakdown, well, we might be right that there's nothing that we can do. That, that, that's true. But we need to place less burden on ourselves and others and put our trust in the Lord. First Peter 5, 6, and 7 says, Humble yourselves under the mighty hand of God so at the proper time he may exalt you, casting all of your anxieties on him, for he cares for you. Worry. The second thing I see in this passage is um, a four-word thing, and maybe you can remember this. I, I think you will. Pray more, talk less. Pray more and talk less. Casting our anxieties on the Lord is a challenge uh, because we want to on to them. We like, we like to, to figure, figure things, things out by ourselves, ourselves but, but cast here means to throw it off, to, to get, get rid of it. it. Now, um, you, you can, can open up the internet and they'll tell you all sorts of ways to get rid of holiday anxiety, anxiety right? right? Um, on on healthcentral.com, healthcentral you can get rid of holiday stress and worry by preparing ahead of time, by taking time to relax, talking with your therapist, talking with your doctor. Limit time with relatives that increase stress. As if. Practice stress-relieving exercise. So some of those things, by the way, are, they're very valid. 
Okay, that they're valid things. But the next thing that we see verse from Paul, inspired by the Spirit, gives the church a spiritual method by which to cast their anxiety. Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. We just spent time praying as Pastor Zach lifted up vocally the prayers that all of us are praying on our hearts. Psalm 139, one of my favorites, says, Search me, O God, and, and know my heart. Um, test me and know my anxious thoughts. Anxious here, again, means worrisome or disquieting thoughts. But God is real. We may have disquieting thoughts, but God is real. And to know that he exists and that he is Lord is to know that he sees you. It's to know that he knows you. The benefit of being seen and known like only God can see and know you is, is a privilege of prayer. We can cast our anxieties on the Lord when we communicate with him in prayer. As a church, as, as individuals, as, as families, as, as couples, we need to make more of, of prayer. Let's break down that verse. First of all, in everything by prayer. Uh, so, so, meaning, meaning as, as a remedy for worry, worry we can, can go before, before the Lord with worship or adoration. Lord, you are awesome. Lord, Lord it, it is a privilege to know you, to be in your presence, and to be known by you. And supplication. We can go to him with our needs. I've been messing up, Lord. You know, I say it, it's, that's part of the... The health of this relationship is that I get to say it to you. I've been messing up. I've been freaking out, Lord. And I, need, I know that you know. But in this quiet moment, I want to let you know. This isn't the prayer that you have to pray at your Thanksgiving table, but this is like, this is the hard stuff. In everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, Meaning, and the whole purpose of this holiday, right, is that we can thank him for what he's doing. We can thank him for our lives. We can thank him even though we're weary. We can thank him even though we're in a pandemic. We can thank him even though we're worried. We can be grateful in all of those things. That's the, that's the great privilege of being a believer. With prayer and supplication, with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. We can ask him the requests and the desires of our hearts for ourselves and for other people. All of these things are benefits in Jesus Christ. Christ was crucified for our sins. He purchased us. He forgives us from the penalty of sin. He forgives us from that sin of worry. He forgives us for depending on ourselves to do the work that only he can do. And as those who have gone before us often sang in Thanksgiving, on Thanksgiving, you guys know this hymn, maybe, not what my hands have done can save my guilty soul. Who knows that one? Not what my toiling flesh has borne can make my spirit whole. We confess that every time we go to the Lord in prayer and ask him to do that which man can't do. Not, Not what I feel or do can give me peace with God. Not all my prayers and sighs and tears can bear my awful load. This, by the way, is a soul-crushing reality to those who are apart from God. If you, when you find out that you are totally helpless and totally on your own, uh, you can do nothing, and you have not the Lord, that messes with you. But... Pastor Zach's in Romans, we'll hear this in the New Year, chapter 8, those who are in the flesh cannot please God. You, however, are not in the flesh, but are in the Spirit. And if, in fact, if the Spirit of God dwells in you, anyone who does not have the Spirit of Christ does not belong to him. But if Christ is in you, although the body is dead because of sin, the Spirit is life because of righteousness. Those prayers, that relationship, that walk is your life. Prayer is a provision from God. It is a way for us to stop worrying 
and a way for us to depend on him. If the spirit of him who raised Jesus from the dead dwells in you, he who raised Christ Jesus from the dead will give, you, give life to your mortal bodies through his spirit who dwells in you. Jesus makes, a po- makes possible a supernatural relationship between you and God the Father. Jesus makes possible a relationship with you and the maker of heaven and earth. And so worry less. And in the power of God, the Holy Spirit, talk less, pray more. What are your requests this Thanksgiving? You shared some of them. You know, we did that termite treatment this last week. But this this week, week, we laid baits baits for these subterranean termites, termites, right? Maybe Maybe that the tent tent couldn't necessarily get. Let me take a minute and ask you, not to share aloud, but for you to go to the Lord in prayer. Will you commit today to give those subterranean prayer requests over to the Lord? Unearth them and share them with him. What are your requests for the next three months of your life? And and what will it take that you might take them to the Lord in prayer? Last thing. We talked about worry and anxiety. We talked about making more of prayer. Last thing is that this verse demonstrates a certain protection in Christ. Verse 7, the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Jesus. When life gets too big to wrap my mind around, God wants you and me to remember that he's bigger than this life, than this understanding of life that we have. We have an example and an encouragement in Jesus. First of all, Speaking of a, of a different sort of peace, this, um, this verse mentions the peace of God that, that transcends all understanding. Um, let's talk about peace with God. This verse talks about peace of God. Let's talk about the peace with God. First of all, Romans 5, 1 and 2. Therefore, since we have been justified by faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ. Now, That's the right standing that we have before him as we come to know him as Lord and Savior. That's peace with God. Paul also goes on to say in Romans 5, through him we have obtained access into faith, by faith, into this grace in which we now stand. The grace in which we now stand is the favor by which he has allowed us to enter his peace. Paul speaks of it as surpassing all understanding. Um, We can come into a greater understanding of how to enter God's peace. Absolutely. That's why we read our Bibles. That's why we support one another. But if we understood everything about it, then if we could wrap our minds around it completely, you you must understand that it wouldn't be worth praising. All right? If you could could wrap your mind around everything and know exactly how it is that the Lord comforts and guards your heart and all that stuff, then that makes you... A um, little bit lo- too larger than life, to be honest. And if, and if you, you think, think you're there, you're probably not. not. Um, no, no one knows, knows the mind of the Lord. Lord. Um, only, only God, God knows, knows us in such a way to communicate his peace to us. Only God knows us in such a way to know what we need in that way. And he wants us to know that true peace is only found in Jesus Christ. C.S. Lewis says God cannot give us a happiness and a peace apart from himself because there ain't none there. He didn't say ain't, I did. There is no such thing as peace apart from the life of God. The Bible says that the peace of God will guard our hearts. Now, how many of you guys are familiar with that passage, guard your heart um, in all things for it is the wellspring of life? Is that a proverb? Has anyone ever heard that one? Many of us take that guard your heart concept and we kind of use it as this kind of spiritual excuse to be um, distant in our relationships, right? Boundaries. 
But, but the, the biblical, biblical take on this, in this passage at least, says something much more loving than boundaries, than talk to the hand. Have any of you been to Washington, D.C.? Have any of you visited the Sentinel Guard of the Tomb of the Unknown Soldier in Arlington, Virginia? I've been there once. Um, you know that those soldiers, those are some tough dudes. Each one of those guys that are chosen to serve in that honor guard um, is, is physically fit for the very demanding responsibility. So they stand there, rain, snow, wind, whatever. Um, they, they have to be between 5'10", and 6'4", with a proportionate weight and build. So much for my next career goal, right? And, and here's, what, here's what the Sentinel Guard does. They do this thing, right, where they march 21 steps down the black man. If you've seen it, it's awesome. Um, then they face east for 21 seconds. Then they turn and face north for 21 seconds. And then they take 21 steps down the mat and then they repeat the process. And after the turn, the sentinel ex executes a sharp shoulder arms movement to place the weapon on the shoulder, and it's the shoulder that's closest to the visitors, and it's to signify that the sentinel stands between the tomb and between any possible threat. 21 was chosen because 21 gun salute is the highest military honor. And when those guys are not up there doing their walk. They're like below ground. Um, they're studying cemetery knowledge, cleaning their weapons, helping the other people, inspecting one another, getting ready to come out there and guard that tomb. The guards also train on their days off. If any of you are ever thinking about approaching that tomb, maybe hopping over the rope line and getting a closer picture, I do not recommend that. They will cut you off. They will make it known that you ain't getting past them. I would not suggest it. They do not mess around. What our passage communicates today, and in closing, um, is that when you are a child of God who has placed their trust in Christ, when you are a child of God who has given their worries to God, when you are a child of God who has drawn near to him in prayer for your needs, for your fears, and in the whole of who you really, really are, even those subterranean prayer requests, you can enter into a peace and into a security where there is never a changing of the guard. You can enter into a peace and security where the same God is always at work between you and any possible threat. This Thanksgiving, and always the same God who was and who is and who will offers you peace and protection. Alfred Lord Tennyson wrote a poem that I'll close with called Love is My Lord and King. Love is and was my Lord and King. And in his presence I attend to hear the tidings of my friend which every hour his couriers bring. Love is and was my King and Lord and will be, though as yet I keep within his court on earth and sleep encompassed by his faithful guard. And at times I hear a sentinel who moves about from place to place and whispers to a world of space in the deep night, in the midst of your anxious thoughts, at the zenith of 2020, whispers to the worlds of space in the deep night that all is well. Do not worry, be anxious about anything, but present your request to God. Let's pray together as we close. Our God and our Father, we do come to you as those who are thin-skinned, as those who are in need of, of strengthening, 
not, not just the strengthening of our bodies, our health, Lord, Lord but in the strengthening of our resolve to persevere in you. The strengthening of our, our resolve to walk in this dangerous world that we live in without worry, casting all of our anxieties upon you because you care for us. We come to you as a people um, by, for whom, by the work the finished work of your Son and the authority that he has, we have an access to you as those who trust in you, Lord, that sometimes we fail to use. God, by the power of your Spirit, help us to come to you in sincere, heartfelt prayer, not just for perfunctory, perfunctory um, meal prayers, or, or, or things that we are let in or, or things like that, Lord, but, but know the depths of our heart that we might worry less and continue to pray more. And we come to you this morning as people in need of protection. God, help our hearts and thanksgiving throughout the holidays and all of our relationships and interactions. Lord, spare us according to your mercy from hurt and, and, and offense, Lord. And, and when we are offended, help us to know that it is our glory to overlook it. That it is our glory to look to you in the midst of that, remembering and identifying with the offense that was upon your Son. And help us to know our union with him this Thanksgiving, Lord and to be grateful for it as we offer our lives, as we seek to be those who do not worry but, but persevere, Lord. Draw us close to you. Remind us by the people around us, Lord, by people that love us, that, that, that we can make it through Thanksgiving, through Christmas, through 2020, and through all that is to come, by your help, by your provision, by your protection. These, These things, things we are grateful, grateful for on Thanksgiving, Thanksgiving Day, and we, we pray, pray to you in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Pastor, for today's message. You know, as you know, we heard, heard the scripture passage today, today the peace of God, the peace that, that He gives to His Son, will guard our hearts and our minds. minds. You know, in following God, let's all give our hearts and minds to Him, and let His work be done in us. And He knows what's best for all of us. Would you guys please stand? And sing, May the Mind of Christ. May the mind of Christ, my Savior, live in me from day to day. By His love and power control. May the word of God dwell richly in my heart from hour to hour, so that all may see I triumph only through his power. May the peace of God, my Father, rule in everything that I may be calm to comfort sick and sorrowing. May the love of Jesus fill me as the waters fill the sea. Exalting self abasing, this is victory. May we run the race before us, strong and brave to face the foe, looking only unto Jesus as we onward go. As 
Brothers and sisters, just a word of um, instruction. Um, we are going to, I'm going to give the benediction in just a moment. After um, the worship team finishes playing, the ushers are going to um, instruct you guys and dismiss you from back to front. Um, and you're going to leave out of the, um, out of the narthex exit. And please don't... Um, Cause a traffic jam, just flow right out of the building, and then we wish you a happy Thanksgiving after that. And now, may you receive God's blessing. Brothers and sisters, in view of God's mercy this Thanksgiving, offer your bodies as living sacrifices, holy and pleasing to God, for this is your spiritual act of worship. Do not be conformed to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your minds. Peace be with you. See you on Sunday.